Okay. We're going to continue in the Ten Commandments. Um, and I have a, a, an encouragement uh, in regard to the Ten Commandments that it includes an embarrassing um, uh, light into the way my mind works. It's, it's strange. But um, when, I was when I was driving age, I don't know if I was 16 or 22, but I was driving past Christian Heritage on the parkway, and I saw a really nice convertible. Some of you in here may own convertibles. I'm jealous. But as I saw this convertible, I said, wow, that's a beautiful convertible. And as I said the word convertible, it struck me like, it struck me, wow, that's not just the name of a car. They call them convertibles because they're convertible. And I, I felt silly for having, I'm, I'm sure I knew that earlier in my life and forgot it, but I was actually struck by the fact that a convertible is called that because it's convertible. And so there's some things in regard to the Ten Commandments that I wonder if we've rubbed shoulders with all of our Christian life and uh, we've, we've heard and we've seen uh, and, and yet maybe it hasn't sunk in with clarity uh, what's, what's taking place here. Uh, and the first one uh, might be the, the purpose of God's Ten Commandments. Why did he give them? Are we to be uh, following them uh, in order to be saved, or why are they here? And, and really, they're, they're here uh, in God's Word to show us God's holiness. They're to, to guide us uh, in life, and they're to point to uh, the need for the Savior. We cannot do all the Ten Commandments, and yet uh, here they are in our Bible for us to be aware of and for us to uh, take seriously. The other thought is that the Ten Commandments are given twice uh, in the Bible. They're given in Deuteronomy, and they're given again, uh, first in Exodus, rather, and they're given again in Deuteronomy. Twice we have a record uh, of, of the Ten Commandments. And this one, maybe you weren't as uh, fully aware of, the reason they're given twice is they're given to two separate groups of people. They're given to, uh, to Israel through Moses as he goes up on Mount Sinai, and uh, the, the mountain is shaking and, and there's fire or smoke uh, coming and uh, God uh, speaks to Moses. And then Moses comes down and he gives the commandments uh, to Israel. But that group, uh, through a lack of faith, did not enter into God's promised land. Uh, and so that group passed. And uh, the, the, the young, uh, not quite adults, became adults, and the, there was a second giving of the Ten Commandments. And so that's why we have them uh, recorded twice, 40 years later, to an entirely uh, different group of people. And this, uh, this one here, I actually just, it was like the convertible. The light went on today, uh, not today, this week as I studied. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant, you always just, well, you probably, you guys are smarter than me. Uh, you say the Ark of the Covenant, and you fully embrace, but to me it was just called the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, but it was called the Ark of the Covenant because it held the Ten Commandments. It was the Ark of that held the Ten Commandments. And yes, uh, the rod and the manna, but it was named uh, the Ark of the Covenant for that very purpose. Uh, covenant. The, the Ten Commandments are a covenant agreement with God. There's several types of covenants in the Bible. Uh, in Genesis 12, we read of a, a, a one-way covenant, unilateral. Uh, God said to Abraham, I will bless you uh, and I will make of you a great nation. The only thing Abraham needed to do was respond. He needed to leave uh, Ur of the Chaldees uh, and then God was going to do all the work, uh, regardless of shortcomings, regardless of this and that. It was a, a one-way uh, covenant. I'm going to do this. Um, now here in Exodus, it's a two-way street. Uh, God wants uh, obedience in order to have blessing. If we obey him, uh, he'll, he'll bless us. Uh, so for you and I, here in the New Testament, we have, if you are saved today, if you've understood that God uh, judges sin and that he judged it on Jesus Christ, 
Uh, if you received a forgiveness for your sins there, as you saw what, what Jesus did on the cross, and you received that gift through faith, there's been a time where you've called out, God, save me. Then you've entered into uh, a, a, a one-way covenant with God. Uh, he saved you, you've responded, and all of your growth, uh, all of your eternal security, everything is found uh, in the finished work of Jesus Christ. But now there's a, two, uh, a two-way covenant there. The blessings on this side of life are directly connected to your obedience. Not your eternal security, but your blessings. And we know that blessings are found as we walk with God. And I don't know how many of you use the word bless in your prayers, but I do. God, would you bless this effort? God, would you bless um, this child that's wayward? God, would you bless? And we're, we're praying for God's blessings. But are we praying for God's blessings with unconfessed sin in our life? Sin that we maybe have sinned the same sin so long that it's become casual to you and I. We know that Jesus wears the nail scars uh, as he sits in the right hand of the Father. And as you and I, would, he would hear the prayer for blessing. God bless. It would be one of the few times when the nail scars are working against you. We're asking God, bless, as we come before him still filthy uh, in our sin. And God uh, sees the nail scars and he says, I can't bless sin. I, ha- I condemn sin. And I condemn sin in my son. And here you come before me with unconfessed sin and casual about it. And you're asking me to bless so as we consider the Ten Commandments, I, uh, I pray that we would just use them as God intended, that they would show us God's holiness, uh, that they would guide us through life, um, but that we would, we would take them seriously and we'd be thankful that Jesus Christ uh, made it possible for us to be saved. Um, let's pray and uh, ask God's blessing on the message. Lord, as we come before you, Lord, as a people um, prone to wander, Lord, as we come before you as a people, Lord, desperately in need of your presence, Lord. We ask your presence, Lord, but we pray that you'd help us to be diligent, Lord. I pray that we would even search for sin in our life, Lord, that we would, we would confess it, Lord, that we would turn from it, and that you would bless. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. The title of the message is First Things First. And in Exodus chapter 20, the passage begins with a first things first uh, thought. In Exodus 20, verse 1, it says, And God said all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And then he goes into the commandments. He, he begins by saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out. I don't know if your mother ever said this to you, but uh, she might have said, I brought you into this world. I can take you out of this world. Uh, I've heard, my mother never said that, uh, but I've heard somebody near her uh, say that. God says, I am the Lord thy God. And he goes on to say, I brought you out of the land. I'm your God. I'm your Savior. I'm your Deliverer. Now that we've established that, first things first, let's establish some things that will guide you uh, and help you. And today, if you've never got the first things first, there is nothing after the first thing for you other than judgment as you stand before God. Make that first thing first. Have God be your Savior through Jesus Christ. And that need, it, is, it did not happen because you come to church often. It does not happen uh, that your grandmother or you've been born into a nice family. Uh, it happens intentionally as you understand your sin has separated. Jesus paid the price 
and you need to uh, ask God's forgiveness. First things first. But as we get into the commandments and as you and I have taken care of the first things first, I pray um, there's some things that he has for us in our steps of our life, ordered and principled steps that we can see outlined uh, in these Ten Commandments. And the very first uh, of the first things first is found uh, in verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, little g, no other gods before me. And it is not to say uh, I'm making room for a God after me. No other God. Uh, as, as you stand uh, before the pastor uh, and you take your wedding vows, uh, if I were to say I will have uh, no other wife before uh, the one that you married and, and with the idea that there's a, it's okay to have some other, uh, that's b- a bizarre thought. No other God. And that word uh, before me indicates an actual location. Uh, it, it's not a sequence, but it's an actual location. In my presence, you can have no other God in my presence. And I believe God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He is all-knowing. There is no room uh, in your life and no room in my life for anything that would uh, take the place uh, of God uh, that we would ever put before God. The idea of um, uh, an open marriage should be sickening uh, to us. And the idea of sharing God's glory as you and I are called and saved Uh, and He is our God, the idea of of putting something on an equal plane or even before Him should be sickening. Uh, And these Ten Commandments, um, I don't know for you, but for me, I've often thought of the Ten Commandments um, as not uh, ten opportunities to please God, but ten things that I need to carry and bear. But I believe if our hearts were right, um, and God can do that, that we could see these as 10 opportunities to to glorify God and say, God, I love you. I can do that. There needs to be a singular uh, affection for God. We see the thought here, uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me. But in in Joshua uh, 22, verse 5, uh, he, he says the same thought very clearly. Joshua 22.5 says, But take a diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, thy servant of the Lord, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all of your soul. That same love the Lord thy God with all thy heart uh, it's mentioned in all three, uh, in three of the Gospels, in three of the four Gospels. Um, he mentions it throughout the Bible. Love God uh, with all of your heart. We need to be uh, truly God's. Um, I read a commentary once, and, and Alistair Begg was in this. Uh, I hope that you don't X me from your, from your listening if you miss a service, but if you, I, I love Alistair Begg's preaching. Um, And Alistair Begg had a thought along these lines. Uh, He said that uh, pride makes self a god, covetousness makes money a god, sensuality makes the the belly or the the flesh a god. That idea, if it feels good, do it. Whatever is esteemed or loved, feared or served, delighted in or depended on, more than God, we make, in effect, a God to us. The old preachers would say, let me see your checkbook and let me see your calendar and I will tell you where your affections lie. We got paid recently uh, from a job and it was through Venmo. I feel like I've arrived uh, cutting technology. That's me, you know. I could probably just say, let me see your phone. And it would be all telling uh, of of finances, of affection, of entertainment. Uh, How much of God does, does, um, how much of you 
uh, does God have? And how much of God do you want? Really? Uh, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh uh, to you. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. In Exodus 20, verse 4, Thou shalt not make any graven image uh, unto thee or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not make any graven image. And I don't know that many of us struggle with this one, um, but interestingly, to tell you quite uh, clearly uh, what is a graven image, while Moses is on the mount speaking with God, receiving the Ten Commandments, we don't know how long he was up there, but uh, when Moses came down and, and broke the stones and he went up again, um, he was up there for 40 days uh, with no food uh, and no God sustained him. Um, and, and it wasn't like uh, Moses uh, came down uh, beat up and, and uh, he, he was in the presence of God and it's, it seemed as if he had everything he needed and maybe even uh, enjoyed the presence of God as God gave him the commandments. Forty days uh, he's there. But on the first giving of the commandments, Moses is gone. And look what happens to Israel while God, uh, in the same period of time, while God's saying to Moses, thou shalt uh, make no graven images. And to help you and I to see uh, what is a graven image, um, Israel's messing up. Uh, shocker. And you and I, uh, mess up, shocker. 32 verse 4 says, uh, oh, let me read a little further up. Uh, 32 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed in coming down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up, out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. And verse uh, 2, And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and they brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made a golden uh, a, a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. A graving tool, something that can um, mark or fashion, um, something that can uh, uh, form a graving tool. And what a thing. Moses is receiving, Thou shalt have no graven images. And while he's giving the commands, Israel is graving an image. Uh, and if you and I ever wonder if we're saved, uh, if we'll lose our salvation uh, by a sin, Israel is not uh, condemned for this. They are certainly uh, disciplined. There's death came to Israel through this sin. Uh, they were punished for it. But if you remember, they did, they did not enter into rest because they formed the golden calf. They did not enter into rest because they would not walk by faith. Um, but this, thou shalt not make any graven image. We need to be careful. Um, and I think as Baptists, I think we have this one down pretty well. There's no statues that you and I would ever come and ask uh, anything of. Uh, there's no uh, cross that you and I might feel would help God to hear our prayers um, but we need to stay careful of that. You know, even uh, there's, there, we could even make uh, an idol, and it would be odd to do it, but to, to, uh, to worship anything. Um, God has it fixed so that he is so high and so righteous that nothing we can form that will be worthy uh, or assist in our worship of him. So no graven images. Um, 
there's a consequence to this, uh, this sin. Uh, it says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself uh, to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting iniquity uh, of the fathers um, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. There's a consequence for sin. And part of me would want to say, um, no, listen, if your father screwed up, uh, you don't have anything, none of that spilled over onto you. But according to God's word, there is some of what our fathers have sinned has spilled over onto you and I. There's a consequence for sin. But thank God uh, in Ezekiel, and because uh, many of us would need to hear this, uh, God judges us not because of our Father. Uh, Some of the consequences uh, probably did land on us, even if it's a consequence of being outside of church, outside of hearing uh, God's Word, uh, outside of uh, seeing God's uh, growth and effect on a father uh, or a mother. Uh, Some of it spills on us, but in Ezekiel 18, God makes it very clear. Uh, It says in Ezekiel 18.20, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So we we are not under a curse because of the family we've been um, born into. God's righteousness uh, can cleanse us, and God's righteousness can take us out uh, from under whatever has happened before. Not all of it, uh, but as far as our standing with God, uh, we are not uh, cursed because of our fathers. But there is a consequence to these sins. Thou shall not have any graven images. Ezekiel 20, I'm sorry, Exodus 20, verse 7, says our third commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. I don't know about you, and I think a lot of it has to do with uh, where we've been brought up, but um, using God's name as a filler word when there's just a pause, or, or uh, I don't know what you guys say when you hit your finger or, or jam your toe or, or whatever. Um, if you're in the shop and I, I get hurt, uh, I, I do, and I, and I actually made them silly enough where no one could think um, I'm swearing, but I, I'll hit something and I'll be like, Ah, oh, gee whiz, dirty, rotten, and, and I'll, I'll have these things that I say. Um, but I hope yours is not the Lord's name. Uh, he holds his name uh, at such a level really beyond our comprehension. Uh, if, if that's you, uh, change it. I, I wonder, uh, some of the substitutes we, we use, I wonder where they came from. Uh, a very old one, and actually it is one that I use, uh, Jiminy Cricket. Like when, when you can't figure out what's going on, Jiminy Cricket. Uh, but, you know, I heard uh, someone trying not to use the Lord's name, um, but using the Lord's name, they said JC, uh, standing for the Lord. Um, and I wondered, as I'm trying to be careful, I wonder if they use that 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 substitute Jiminy Cricket because there's a J and a C. And so now I'm wondering if I have to get rid of, of, of saying that. Uh, but we need to be careful with the Lord's name. Um, I went to a, a Jewish website and this brought some clarity to the Lord's name. It said, in Jewish thought, a name is not merely uh, an arbitrary designation a random combination of sounds, the name conveys the nature and the essence of the thing named. It represents the history and the reputation of the being named. There's more to the name of of God. There's folks that won't even say 
the name of God. The Jewish, uh, Jewish people intentionally would write uh, YHWH. And that's not a texting acronym. Uh, I never get those texting acronyms anyway. Um, but it, it's, it's actually what they, they put that there because you cannot pronounce it. And so as they would read it, uh, and as they would, uh, they, they couldn't really say it. And it was by design, out of reverence for God's name. In Exodus chapter 3, when Moses is speaking with God there at the burning bush, and Moses says to God, who will I say uh, sent me? They're going to ask me who it is that, that has sent me. Uh, whose authority am, am, I, am I under here? And in uh, Exodus 3.13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, uh, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am uh, hath sent me unto you. Even in that, God protected his name, but he said, I am eternal God. I am, I am uh, God uh, all-powerful. That's who you tell them when they, when they ask who sent you. Uh, it was not uh, what, what do they call you, but who? Who has sent me? The, uh, before I started my study uh, into the name of God, I wondered if the commandment would be wrong to, to preach more on uh, to the commandment. Simply what leaves our mouths, is that the extent of it? Or is there more to it? Uh, thou shalt not take uh, the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And there is more to it as I looked into it. When you got married uh, for the ladies, you took uh, a name and now you're linked. Um, we take... Uh, the name of God, uh, as he saves us and we become a child of God. Uh, and as we carry the name, we carry with it the reputation of that name. Are you dragging the name of the Lord through the filth and muck uh, in your lifestyles and in your choices and in my lifestyle and in my choice? They're linked. Uh, they're 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 exalted together or they're sullied uh, together. We, we need to be careful of taking the name of the Lord. A rabbi, when he wrote uh, the name, several of the names of God, he would need to be very, very careful before writing it because they felt so, uh, such a reverence to the name of God that they did not think it was right to erase it once it was written. Do you and I hold the name of God? I was at a, a summer camp once and they were doing a skit and, they, and this, this kid was pretending to be a Southern Baptist and he was repeatedly using uh, the Lord's name uh, in a skit and rather flippantly. Um, and it's just, let's be careful of both what leaves our mouth in regard to the Lord's name how we live our life, uh, that we carry with the name. We've taken the name of the Lord God. Uh, let's be careful of uh, how we live our life. He will not hold. Uh, there's, a, there's a consequence to this one as well uh, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 7b. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Let's be careful. In Exodus 20, verse 8, we have the last of today's commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This commandment, uh, I, I hesitantly say what I say because I think um, we're so quick to set aside 
things of God, especially if we feel that he's given us license and liberty to do it. Uh, so uh, to preach accurately the word of God, uh, you should know that this commandment is not repeated uh, in the New Testament. And some of you are like, yes, let's go party like rock stars on Sunday. Um, it's not intended for that, but you should know that it is not uh, repeated in the New Testament. I believe uh, it does have to do with um, the, the, some of the holy commandments that God intended for Israel. But has he not also called you and I to be holy? As a matter of fact, the word, uh, be ye holy, for I am holy, uh, is the exact word that's used here, keep it holy. Um, exact word. And interestingly, if you like uh, odd details about uh, theology, they remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Keep is used 366 times in the Old Testament. I can see some of you glazing over. Uh, some of you maybe will lock in. But 366 times the word keep is used. And here where they use it, keep it holy, is a one, it's the only time this Hebrew word, uh, it's translated keep, but if you look at the Hebrew word, it's the only time this Hebrew word is used and translated as keep. Keep it holy. And if you look down a little bit, at verse 11, it says, For in six days the Lord made uh, heaven and earth, the sea, and all that, is, uh, all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. It's the exact same word, to keep and to hallow. And that word means to proclaim something as sanctified or holy. I'm proclaiming it. And, and God said, when you keep the, the Sabbath to Israel, when you keep the Sabbath, everyone that sees that the, the gates of your city have been shut for trade and that you're, you're clearly not out. Uh, I don't want to make it too practical, and I'm trying to, I don't want to be a Pharisee either, but you're not out mowing your lawn uh, as the rest of the world mows their lawn. And I don't mind if you mow your lawn on, on uh, Sunday, but wouldn't it be special is if you purposed in your heart, I'm going to guard the, this day that we've set aside and we've called it holy and we're going to proclaim it as holy. We're going to live our lives so that there's a, a, a pointing to God's holiness and that you can see it, miracle of miracles, through my life and through your life. The world should be able to see a difference. And yes, I believe this was a, a holiness commandment for Israel, but I believe there's opportunity for you and I to point to God by the way we treat one day a week. The, we, we worship on Sunday because that's the day the Lord uh, rose. And we set that day aside. There's other scriptures that would point uh, us to that. Do you treat uh, a day a week? And it is, actually is repeated uh, uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together in Hebrews. Are you careful with um, God's Ten Commandments? Remember the, the Sabbath. Are you careful with uh, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord? Are you careful with the graven images? Are you careful with thou shalt have no other God before me? There is a penalty uh, and it does affect our children but do you know uh, and there's a blessedness to this. If we will honor God's Ten Commandments, it will make our lives different and we'll stand. We pray for blessing. Uh, and one of the biggest blessings that I would think we would want is for our families uh, behind us to honor God and to see God. Uh, I was preparing for... Uh, church probably three weeks ago I had my clothes on that are different from the rest of the week we were going to church uh, which is different from the rest of the week I had my Bible out 
which we should, none of us should say which is different than the rest of the week. We should have our Bible out every day. Um, but my grandson was over, and he started asking some, some questions about uh, the Lord. Why do, why do you go to church? Why, why do we hold this book? When he, when he does touch my Bible, I am careful with it. I, uh, I had a little kid grab my Bible once out on the street, and he was thumbing through it while I was talking to his mom. This isn't, I don't think this is the book. It looks like it, though. He took m- the back maps, and he just ripped, uh, ripped the maps. And I was like, oh! <laughs> you know, uh, we don't want to make an idol out of the, out of the Bible, but uh, it freaked me out. But the way we even hold and, and the way we live our lives should show to the generations behind. And Jackson began asking questions about God. He's growing up in a home where they, they don't. It makes sense that As he opens up, my refrigerator should be different. The Lord's Day. Even though I love God, and even though uh, he saved me for Jackson, if he didn't see me dressed for church, carrying my Bible, he may not ask. Why, Why do you do these things? Let's live our life in a way that would cause somebody to say, wow, that's different. You don't, you don't blend in in a good way. You don't blend in. And it's because of a, a reverence for God in our hearts and it will spill into a reverence for his word and his commands. And it will spill into a carefulness on the steps that we take as we walk through this short life. Uh, Going to see our Savior, I hope, but definitely with a regard uh, for sin and for his commandments. Let's pray. Lord God, we love you. Thank you for your grace, Lord, and your goodness, Lord. When we fall short, you're not there to pour wrath out Lord, when you do correct, help us to thank you for it and to help us to walk right uh, because of it. Lord, help us to hold in high regard, the highest regard, your word and your commandments. Lord, give us strength to do what's right, to be your people in name and in deed and in our heart. In Jesus' name, amen.